Off we go. Beautiful. So we're going to start um, seated today. So if you want to come to a comfortable seated position, that might mean popping a cushion or a blanket underneath your hips. It's a full on weekend. Uh, it's Father's Day. It's also today uh, International Yoga Day. And it's the summer solstice as well, so that's officially the longest day at the start of summer. Not that you'd really um, realise it today, looking outside of the weather. So what I try to do is get as many of those things into our practice today as I can. We've got Annie coming along. So what we've got is quite a um, classical yoga practice. Uh, we're going to start with some breath work and we're going to work through a series of sun salutes, but we're going to work very slowly and mindfully through the sun salutes, we're not going to throw ourselves through them. And, and finish off again with that, that little kind of balancing with um, trying to balance the energies today, so not too much heat in the body and equally not too much rest because yoga is all about finding that balance. So before we start, I thought I would just read you um, a little bit from a a book I found called Yoga and Mindfulness Practices. And when we look at yoga, I think this, if you mean if you Google yoga, my goodness, you get all sorts of stuff, don't you? And I thought it might be nice to, to kind of remind ourselves what yoga is, is really about in a day or at a time when there's so much on Instagram with people throwing themselves through impossible poses. And I thought this description was, was really lovely. So the author, Michelle Theoret, wrote, Yoga cultivates intimacy, the art of being engaged and really aware in our moment-to-moment -moment experiences. Intimacy is the ability to be with whatever is arising and to leave nothing out without labelling, narrating or judging. We're not trying to get anywhere or escape anything. We're dropping in rather than checking out. And we use yoga as a microscope to examine the way we engage in our moment-to-moment -moment experiences and with the world around us. I really like that. I think that's a really kind of on-the-ball, on short, succinct description of what yoga is all about. So let's start by coming to a comfortable seated position today. And have a little play with where you want your hands to be. Back of your hands might be resting on your thighs or your knees. You might have the hands just gently cupped one on top of the other in your lap or turning the palms down. I sometimes got to go through all three of those positions before I find the one that works for me on any given day. So sitting up nice and tall, if you want to lean up against a wall today or if you want to lean uh, to lie down, feel free. I'm just going to stay here for a few moments, closing the eyes. And just again, using this time at the beginning of a practice for that decompression. And really the ancient texts about yoga talk very little about physical movement. There's no pictures of people putting their body through the rigors of a physical practice. It's all about calming the fluctuations of the mind. So let's allow just a little bit of time at the beginning of a practice to let go of the weekend, let go of the week. And again, from the, the book I just read that little introduction from, she also offers some tips for success in yoga. So maybe thinking about those throughout the practice today. Compassionate curiosity to stop judging yourself. Dispassionate interest. So notice, but don't analyze. Self-respect. Your body and your very existence is a miracle. Attention and openness to what's going on moment to moment. Self-care, so listening and resting when you need to. And consistency. So we are consistent with our practice, but not too much, not too little, finding that balance. 
as you close the eyes, just the face begin to soften, the shoulders begin to drop away from the ears, the spine nice and tall. See if you can cultivate just for a few moments that compassion of curiosity with where you are today. Giving yourself a moment to acknowledge and notice what's coming up for you today. Just thinking about what I mentioned on Friday, that little shorthand of thought, emotion, sensations, tests. So we just check in with all three of those. Again, noticing any repetitive thought patterns. Emotions are bubbling away beneath the surface today, and what sensations we're feeling within the body. Not just those bullying sensations of pain and tension, but those more subtle sensations that lie just beneath the surface. And we'll start on this International Day of Yoga with a very traditional start to a practice, which is a pranayama or breath based meditation. Now, if it causes breathlessness or you simply don't enjoy it then just visualize it you don't have to do the, the kind of physical manifestation of it i'm going to start by balancing things out with a, a lovely balanced breath sequence so we'll take our right hand i'm not going to mirror you and we make a little telephone receiver with it so you curl in your middle three fingers so just your thumb and your little finger are free and you just bring your thumb and your little finger on either side of the fleshy part of your nostril. I just like to tuck my other three fingers in. There's lots of different variations in this one. I find it easiest to maintain. So just with the fingers resting lightly there, just allow the shoulder to soften. You can do this again just by visualizing if this is uncomfortable. Let's take a deep and smooth breath in through both nostrils. And a full and complete breath out through both nostrils. Using your little finger, let's close off the left nostril. On your inhale, breathe in through the right. And closing off the right nostril with your thumb, freeing up the left as you breathe out through the left nostril. Then we breathe in through the left. Close off the left, free up the right, and breathe out through your right nostril. That's one round. So continuing like that, breathing in through the right. Using the thumb to gently close the nostrils, you can breathe out through the left. Taking that next inhale through the left. And sealing off the nostrils, you breathe out through the right. So continue in your own time, just a few rounds. And it's said that the left side of the body linked to that sun energy, that yang, more masculine energy that we're going to just work with a little bit today. And our sun salutes. And the left side linked to the lunar energy. It's also a new moon this weekend. I knew there was something else. So the left side, softer, more feminine quality, the yin and the energy. You might notice that one side feels a little bit more blocked. So again, if it's uncomfortable, just release the hands and visualize that stream of breath traveling in and up and then out and down through alternate nostrils. Let's just do a couple more rounds of that. And breath work, pranayama, a fundamental part of our yoga practice. So the next time that you breathe out through your right nostril, finishing off the round that you're doing, we'll just relax the hands down. Again, whatever position is comfortable, and just allow the breath to settle. And maybe notice. Uh, feels. We've done that for a short time, but it's a really nice one to do if you're feeling a little bit discombobulated. And we're beginning to move with that sense of even flow of breath now. Let's raise the arms all the way up as you inhale. You can lift the chin, maybe the palms touch. And a little pressing of the palms together as you draw the hands down the midline to the heart. So a little bit of pressure there, waking up through the arms twice more. So we're going to work with the breath today. Reaching up nice and tall, lengthening the sides of the waist, and then exhale, not worrying if you're moving faster or slower than me. We're just going to do one more like that. Inhale, reaching up. Lovely, saluting the sun to come. Exhale, hands to heart. 
Lifting breastbone to meet thumbs. We're going to stretch the arms out nice and wide now. Lovely, thumbs up towards the ceiling, really reaching the arms apart. We take a little twist to the right, and that left hand comes to your right shoulder and gently eases the arm back. You can take the gaze over that right hand if you wish. And then when you're ready to inhale, open the arms up wide as you come back from centre. Exhale, we take that twist to the left, and the right hand comes to that left shoulder, easing it back. Lovely, so working with the breath now. Inhale, we open the arms, lift the breastbone. Take that little twist, and the opposite hand comes to the shoulder, gently easing it back. So you might find that you can turn your head to look over that back shoulder, or simply look towards the side wall, or even keep the gaze forwards. So you're really feeling that movement from your midsection, from the waist up. Lovely. So let's make this the last one over to the left, turning, turning, keeping the spine nice and tall if you reach over to the left. Coming all the way back through centre. Let's reach the arms up as you inhale. And as you exhale, bring the hands behind you. I'm going to turn my fingertips out to the side, come up onto little tented fingertips. Really push the floor away, lift and brighten the chest. Again, the chin might want to lift. We're trying to avoid dropping the head too far back. Really sense of broadening through the collarbones. Lovely, and then soften into the hands. If you're sitting cross legged, give the legs a little shake and recross on the opposite way. Again, reaching up as you inhale. This time we'll come to a little side stretch. So right hand down, left arm overhead as you exhale. You can turn the gaze up or keep the gaze down. Inhale, push the floor away. Other side. So as you just do that little rock side to side, if you find that stability through your seat. So again, you're moving from the waist up. Lovely, that sense of really lengthening, sort of creating length. I was always taught in my training, first thing we do with the spine is create length before we do anything, anything else. Lovely, again, let's do one more over to the left. Lovely, inhaling, sweeping the arms up. This time again, exhale, swing the hands behind, fingertips face forward or out to the side, lifting up through the chest as you push the floor away. Option is time to just come up onto your knees if you're cross-legged, so you're pushing the hips up. Little chance to open up through the hips, only if that feels nice. Beautiful, and then lower the hips down. I'm going to roll over my feet to come onto all fours, but if your ankles don't like that, find your way onto all fours in whatever way feels comfortable. Lovely. Hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Let's keep moving with the flow, but again, really tuning into that breath now. So flattening your feet, pushing into your hands, finding that nice long back, love. And then as you allow your belly to drop, tailbone to lift, we slide the chest forwards as you inhale. And like a Halloween cap, exhaling, rounding up through the spine, looking back towards your belly button. Lovely, and then maybe closing the eyes now so you can just continue with your breath. Again, coming back to that sense of checking in. So we begin our physical practice. Our asana practice, all the physical postures are called asanas or asanas. And one of the yoga texts said that whatever we're doing, it should be done with steadiness and ease in the posture. So can we find that throughout the practice today? We're losing sight of that sensation of moving with the breath. Steadiness and ease. Let's bring the chest forward as you inhale. This time we should exhale, rounding the back, sitting back towards the heels. Lovely. And I'm going to just walk my hands forwards, just by maybe one hand's length. Come up onto my fingertips, hugging my upper arms alongside the ears. We get that sense of, again, elongating through both sides of the waist. A little bit of energy as we begin to head towards our southern salutes. Now let's keep the arms where they are, but just bring your palms down. We're going to ripple up onto fours again. I'm going to come up in that angry cat again. And then begin to shift the weight forwards, keeping the body in that lovely line. So we're not dropping the hips forwards. We're keeping that lovely sense of navel hugging to spine. And then pushing the floor away, rounding back, sitting back towards the heels. Let's add the breath. So inhale, we come all the way up, shifting the weight slightly forwards. Elbow squeezed in. And exhale all the way back into that child pose, lovely. Inhaling up. So again, a little squeeze the bottom, navel to spine, neck nice and long, and then sitting all the way back. So we can stay here, 
or this time as you inhale, come all the way up and begin to just drop the body forwards a little more. So you're coming onto the tops of your thighs, hips dropping down into a deeper back bend. And then we push the floor away back into that child pose. So it's a little variation of upward dog. So inhale, either the body into that nice long line of plank or dropping the hips. Again, keep pushing into the hands so the shoulders stay engaged, lovely. So whatever we are, let's do just once more. Beautiful. Dropping forwards, hips dropping down if you want to open up through the back. So this next time, we're going to pause and hold. So either in that plank pose, that plank variation of the body nice and long, taking the gaze forwards. Or if you're with me, dropping the hips down, we can stay there. Or adding a little bit more, just pick up your shins and bring your toes almost as though you want to push them towards the back of your head into a deeper back bend. Choice is yours. Lovely. So hips dropping down, toes lifting up. Beautiful. And then let's flatten the feet. Push back onto all fours. Keep the hands where they are as you tuck your toes under. And let's find our first downward dog of the day. So you might need to walk your feet in a tad or two. If you want to stay on all fours today, stay on all fours. A little shake of the head, a little pedal out. I'm just going to begin to add a little twist because my hips kind of want to do that today. I want to add a little twist, just turning and looking underneath the armpit to armpit as I straighten one leg and then the other. Beautiful. And then as you find a moment of stillness in that downward dog, can you find that steadiness and ease? Steadiness may be, but ease, oh, it's difficult here in this pose. So what can we do? We can bend the knees a little or a lot. We can get that sense of imagining we've been pulled up and back through our hips. So we're opening up some space in the low back, upper arms alongside the ears, arms just in line with the sides of the body. So we're finding that steadiness and ease, pressing into the knuckles and the finger pads, as well as the heels, the hands. Easy breaths. Beautiful. And then there, we'll take the gaze forward as you walk forward. Little walk forwards, feet towards hands. And again, as you come into that first forward bend, really bend to the knees generously. Take the sting out of the hamstrings. You might want to cradle your opposite elbows and have that little sway, drawing that half circle just over your toes. Easing the body out, just let the body hang. Really nice, just release the back. If that's not nice on the back, then just bring your hands above your knees, holding on there and coming into more of a flat back position. Beautiful. So if you're doing that little rock side to side, let's let go of the elbows so the arms can dangle in front of you. Keep the chin to your chest as you begin to roll your way up slowly, slowly, slowly. So hopefully I've not managed to cut my head off there. Beautiful. So we're going to come into our summer solstice at sun salutes, but we're going to move through them really slowly, not do too many of them, but work really with the breath today. So first round we'll do with our breath and, and hold the postures a little bit longer. And then the second time we'll, one movement, one breath, we'll speed things up a little bit. But let's start finding that mountain pose. So maybe lift and spread your toes. See if you can keep a little bit of colour of the mat between your toes as you spread them. Hands always want to do kind of that as you spread your toes. Lovely. And then lengthen the tailbone down between the heels. Get the sense of brightening your breastbone up to meet your thumbs as you bring your hands to your heart. Lovely. Find that steadiness and ease. Softening the shoulders, softening the face, allow the breath to settle. Really breath-led, sun salute practice. So we'll build up nice and slowly. So let's release the hands down alongside you, palms facing forward, shoulders nice and open. And as you inhale, let's sweep the arms up. You might want to lift the gaze. And exhale, let's bring the hands down to the heart as we did before, just pressing the palms gently together. Twice more, inhale, so tuning into the breath. Inhaling, reaching up. Lengthen all four sides of the waist as you exhale, a little pressing between the palms, hands, draw down to the heart. Lovely, last time, then we'll add on, inhale. Lovely, exhale. So we're gonna add on this next time. You might want to add a little back bend now. So as you inhale and sweep the arms up, you might be pushing the hips gently forwards and elevating the breastbone up. And as you exhale, big swan dive down, arms either out to the side or straight in front of you, bending the knees as much as you need to. 
Let's slide the hands up the legs, shins or thighs as you inhale into that halfway lift. Nice long neck. Exhale, let the body yield forwards back into that forward fold. Bend the knees a lot as you push the floor away, rising up to stand again. You might be pushing the hips forwards, elevating the chest. Hands to heart. Exhale, lovely. We're going to do that once more. Inhale. Half sun salutes, getting us ready. Greeting the day, longest day. Summer solstice. We'll lift that. Inhale. Shins or thighs, halfway lift. Exhale as you fold. Yeah, the pagans call this litha. Festival. Celebrating Mother Nature, the coming of the sun. Exhaling hands to heart. Beautiful. Adding on. Inhale, reach up. Do our first round nice and slowly. Exhale again. Generously bend the knees if you need to. All the way down. Finding that halfway lift. Sliding the hands up the legs. Inhale. As you exhale, let's plant the hands and step the right leg back keeping the knee lifted. And as you inhale, let's drop the hips, look forwards, lift the chest. And as you exhale, step back into that downward dog. And again, this first round, we'll add that little pedal, little shake of the head, finding that steadiness and ease in that downward dog, pushing into the hands, lifting up through the hips. Beautiful. Then as your next inhale, let's drop down onto all fours. Flatten the feet as you exhale all the way down onto your belly. When we get there, we'll take the hands nice and wide off the mat, finding some space in the shoulders. Let the head hang, swan's neck, as you come up into that cobra as you inhale. Nice broad-hearted cobra, head hanging. Exhale, lengthen the chest, really get the sense of stretching the chest forwards and down. Twice more like that. Inhale, that ripple up, pushing the hips down. Exhale, you see if you can stretch the belly forwards and down. Lovely, just once more. Inhale. And exhale, lovely. Let's bring the hands alongside the shoulders, pushing onto all fours. And tuck the toes, lift the hips downward facing dog, or stay on all fours. So let's see if we can hold this downward dog for a full round of breath. Take a full and deep inhale. And as you exhale, can you allow your hips to lift your heels to sink? Then look forwards between your hands, and as you inhale, let's step or help that right foot forwards. Pushing off that back foot as you exhale to the top of the mat into your forward fold. Big rise up to stand as you inhale, little bend of the knees, maybe that little back bend. Hands draw down to the heart, exhale, beautiful. So we're going to do that with the left leg, and do one movement, one breath. Inhale, rise up again. Arms might touch overhead, they might not. Exhale, get a sense of stretching your chest forwards and down as you descend. Inhale as you lift the head, lift the heart, halfway lift. Exhale, left leg steps back, and we keep the knee lifted. And as you inhale, allow the hips to sink and the chest to open. And then as we exhale, let's push back, downward facing dog. Full round of breath here, you can maybe lift up onto your heels if you need some movement. And exhale, let's sink the heels, hips nice and high as you exhale. Inhale as you drop down onto all fours for this round. And exhale, allow the body to yield forwards, flattening the feet, come down onto your belly. Hands wide for that lovely swan neck cobra. Inhale, let the head hang. And as you exhale, belly stretches forwards and down, all the way down. Hands alongside the shoulders, push up onto all fours as you inhale. Tuck the toes, lift the hips down, we're facing dog. Exhale. And let's take that full round of breath. If you need to move, let's lift the heels as you inhale. Sometimes it feels nice to continue the movement. Exhale, heels sink, hips high. This time as you inhale, look forwards, left leg, spring it forwards or step or help it. Stepping off that back foot, exhale to the top of the mat. Lovely. Big rise up to stand as you inhale. Exhale, hands to heart. Let's close the eyes, take a full round of breath here. Breathing in, feel the heart lift, shoulders sink. And exhale, drop the awareness down into your feet, your foundation. So really feel again that steadiness and ease. One of the translations for those two Sanskrit words is grounded. So we feel grounded in our postures. Let's add on this next time. Again, we'll do it nice and slow first round and then add on. One movement, one breath. Let's reach up as you inhale. 
This time as you exhale and take the hands behind you, interlacing them so we can keep the heel of the hands apart and stretch the knuckles to the wall behind you so we're lifting and opening up through the breastbone. Again, you might choose to lift your head a little bit. You might want to stay here or come in with me, bending the knees, allowing the body to melt forward so at the same time the arms might lift and come forwards and up. If that's not for you, keep the body upright or keep the hands resting on the low back. Easy breath there just to open the shoulders. And then let's all just bring the hands onto the low back. Fingertips to floor or shins or thighs. So as you inhale, we can lift the chest forwards, coming into that halfway lift. Lovely. And as you exhale, let's step the right leg back and bring the knee down this time, keeping the toes tucked under. Inhale, sweep the arms up. So we're coming into a crescent lunge again. There might be a little back bend. And as you exhale, sweep the arms all the way forwards and back. Lovely. So we're going to do that twice more. So energize that front foot down into the mat as you inhale and exhale, we release, lovely. Again, that kind of balance of forces, that energy of that uplift. And that release as you exhale, beautiful. So last time, all the way up. And this time we'll bring the hands down to frame that foot. Then keep the right hand where it is, left hand comes onto the knee, and we'll come into a little twist, turning the chest. Option to keep the back knee down or lift the back knee and we'll take that left arm up towards the ceiling. So as you come into that first twist, see if you can draw that left outer hip in. We tend to jut the hips out, so draw that left outer hip in, and peel the chest open. Again, that top arm might come almost behind the level of the shoulder if you're very open in the chest. Beautiful. And then as you look down, let's bring the hands down. Pick up that back knee if you've not done so. So on your next inhale, we can step into plank. And exhale, we'll come forwards and down. Feel free to bring your knees down. If you're coming down that full chaturanga, chest comes down before belly. Beautiful. So we're going to come into Sphinx now. So let's slide the elbows forward, some variation. And checking that your elbows are in line with your index finger, that your arms aren't splayed out to the side there. So we lengthen the toes back. And imagine pulling your elbows back towards the sides of the body so we feel a lovely energy through the chest. Beautiful. So you might want to stay here, that lovely proud sphinx, gazing forwards enigmatically into the future, which is all any of us can do at the moment. Or you might want to add on, it's a little bit strong. So we'll tuck the toes under. And as you inhale, we push into the forearms, lift the body, and look back towards your toes. And as you exhale, we come back into that sphinx, lowering the hips, keeping the toes tucked under. Twice more. So inhale, we Push the body up, whoa, a little bit of strength. But get that release and sinking as you exhale. Hips lower, gaze forwards. Lovely, once more, it's strong. Woo! Back down into that sphinx as you exhale, lovely. Flatten the feet, bring the hands alongside the shoulders, push up all fours, inhale. Exhale, let's push the hips high, downward facing dog. Beautiful. So let's add on a little bit for this second round of our sun salutes. By lifting that right leg all the way up behind you, turning the toes slightly out to the right. Now see if you can come up onto the ball of that left foot, lifting that right leg a little higher, take an inhale. And as you exhale, knee to chest, foot to the inside of that right hand, lovely. And as you exhale, step the feet forwards, top of the mat. Big bend of the knees to push the floor away, rise up as you inhale. Exhale, hands to heart. Beautiful. Take a full round of breath in, inhaling fully and deeply. So again, no rush with these sun salutes. Exhale as you release. Lovely. So we'll do one movement, one breath with that left leg. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, swim the hands behind, interlace the knuckles. Feel the hands might stay apart. Inhale, draw the knuckles back. Exhale, big bend of the knees as you yield the body forwards, maybe the arms lift up. We'll pause here just for a moment. Option to keep the body upright and just allow again the sense of the crown of the head dropping down. Keep a little drawing of the shoulder blades towards one another on the back. Lovely, keep the shoulders safe. And the hands come to the low back. And then releasing the hands to a floor or shins or thighs. Inhale as you lift the chest. 
Exhale, left leg steps back, knee to floor. Keep the toes tucked, three lunges. So rise up, inhale, push into that right foot, lift the chest, greet the day. Exhale, release. Lovely, inhale. Beautiful, exhale. So this last full crescent lunge, so inhale, rise up again. The shoulders might be slightly behind the hips. Exhale, so this next time we'll come into that little twist. So rise up as you inhale. And exhale, we'll bring the hands down to frame that foot. Left hand stays where it is, right hand to the knee. And we start to turn the chest, so get the sense of peeling that top shoulder open. Option to keep the knee down, or now is the time to push the floor away, open the back of the knee, before we take that right arm up. Squeeze that right in outer hip, in and back. And again, that top arm might open a little further back if the shoulders and the chest feel comfortable there. Looking up or down, whatever works for you. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, let's bring both hands down, pick up the back knee. And as you inhale, let's step back into plank. Exhale as you lower down, knees might come down first to ease that transition. Beautiful. Flattening feet, slide the elbows forwards. Make sure the elbows are right underneath the shoulders. Again, checking that the index fingers are in line with the elbows, stretching the toes away from you. And just bring your belly button up towards your spine this time so you can really feel that you're protecting through the low back. Option to stay there or tuck the toes, ready for that little push up. So as you inhale, we push the floor away, lift the hips, drop the gaze towards the toes. Exhale, gaze come forwards as you lower the hips, lovely. So twice more, whoop, as you inhale, exhale as you lower. So you might just want to stay in sphinx or last one with me. Inhale, that's a strong one here. Exhale as you lower down, beautiful. Flattening the feet, hands alongside the shoulders. Inhale, push up all fours. Exhale, downward facing dog. You want to stay on all fours, stay on all fours. Let's just pause for a moment in that downward dog, establishing again that steadiness and ease. So this time as you inhale, let's take that left leg up, toes turn out, rising up onto the ball of that right foot. And as you exhale, step or help that left foot forward, top of the mat. Beautiful, inhale, stepping that right foot forward, slowly exhale to fold. Rise all the way up as you inhale. Beautiful, hands to heart, exhale. Just close the eyes, again, just cultivate that steadiness of breath. If you find that the breath has kind of become a little bit ragged, just bring it back into that conscious control. I read this lovely phrase somewhere, it says don't, don't move into any posture, don't take your breath, don't take your posture anywhere, you can't take the breath with you or get there in the end. That sense of always being guided by the breath. So once you've brought the breath back into that conscious control, just bring the hands to the hips, you know, balance those strong sun salutes that we've been doing, that rising of energy with a balance now to bring back that sense of balance of energy. So I'll turn around to face you there. So make sure you've got some space behind you because you're going to be stepping your left leg back. Come around this way. So you'll be stepping your left leg back. Beautiful. So shifting the weight into that right foot. Just see if you can find your tree pose with your left leg. So it might be heel resting on top of the foot or bringing the shin above or below the knee, never on the knee joint. So this is when we need to find our steadiness and ease. So lifting, lifting breastbone to meet palms. Again, not worrying or striving to have the foot above the knee that causes frustration. So again, that sense of being with where you are today. And then on the next inhale, we slowly take the arms all the way up above the head. And as you exhale, draw the hands gently down that center line, little pressure between the palms, hands back down to the heart. Lovely. And then going the opposite way, so drawing the arms down. Inhale, reach the arms up. Beautiful. Exhaling, hands to hearts. 
I'm just going to come and stand at the top of my mat. So I'm going to bring that left knee to point forwards, lifting knee up towards chest, take an inhale. And as you exhale, can you take that leg back and open the arms wide, coming into that little warrior three. You might need to touch that back foot down. That's okay. Beautiful. And then with steadiness and ease, can we land that back foot, that left foot, turning the heel in and the toes out, setting up for that warrior two. So take a moment to adjust the feet. I'm sure we all landed beautifully, gracefully. Straightening both legs as you inhale, rise the arms up, palms might touch. Exhale, let's settle into that warrior two. So imagine now you want to draw the mat together. So feel a little energy between inner thighs, that front heel pulling in. And again, that little sense of the inner thighs drawing together whilst keeping the pressure through the little toe edge of both feet. So the legs are active and strong there, beautiful. Shoulders in line with the hips. Let's turn that front palm up, reach forwards. And then looking down, forearm to thigh, let's take the top arm up or up and over into that side angle. And what happens here sometimes is the bottom sticks out behind you. So can you tuck the bottom under? and maybe roll the gaze up towards the ceiling. Again, the sense of peeling the chest open. Beautiful. Lovely, and then looking down as you inhale back into that warrior two, arms wide, and exhale, we'll reverse our warrior. Keep again that, that strength through the legs. Beautiful, inhale into your warrior. Exhale into that side angle. You might bring the hands down a little lower, but keep the bottom tucked in. Beautiful. Inhale, push the floor away, straight through the legs. Last time into that reverse warrior. Beautiful. Let's come into that warrior two. And then turning both feet forwards. Turn the heels in, toes out. If you feel really wide there, just zigzag the feet in. So as you sink down into the feet, again, pushing into the little toe edge of both feet, you sink into that goddess pose. Lovely. Again, honouring that summer solstice, that Pagan festival is celebrating Mother Nature, hands to heart. Lovely one for the shoulders this time. So imagine now you're taking a jump off. So just cross the forearms, sit deep into the knees. And as you straighten the legs, it's almost like you're taking a jump off. So the arms reach up. And then we bend the knees and allow the elbows to drop down towards the waist. Other forearm in front. Inhale, so that big sweep across the face. Open up through the chest. Now we want to open the shoulders, keep the chest open as you release, twice more. So we change the cross the forearms every time. As you sink down, keep squeezing towards that outer edge of the foot. Last time, inhale, reach up. And exhale, reach down. We're going to add on this next time. So big rise up as you inhale. This time as you exhale, adjust the feet for that warrior two, the opposite way. So the left foot's facing forwards, and we've got the right heel sliding away. Beautiful, lovely. Or is it the other way around? <laughs> I might not be mirroring you at this stage. So let's find again that lovely warrior, turning the palms up, inhale as you push the floor away, straighten both legs. Exhale, gazing forward. So again, that gaze, that drishti point, really important in our yoga postures, helps again to bring that focus to the mind. Again, that sense of your inner thighs squeezing towards one another, pressing into the outer edge of both feet. And then turning the front palm up, reach forwards. And then forearm to thigh, top arm up or up and over. Again, checking in at the bottom, hasn't stuck out. So we're pushing in the hips forwards. Keep pressing down through the outside edge of that back foot. Lovely. And then use that inhale, bit of momentum back into your warrior two. Exhale, reverse your warrior. Gazing up as you reach that front arm up. Keep the front knee deeply bent with the flow. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, forearm to thigh, top arm up and up and over. I'm not mirroring you, sorry guys. You're all right now, aren't you? Inhale, you know where we go. And exhale, reaching all the way back. Beautiful. So coming back into that warrior two. Again, we're going to come into that horse stance. So both feet facing forwards. Heels in, toes out, bending the knees. Ready for that little um, jumper removing exercise that we're going to add on. So squeezing the knees out. One forearm in front of the other, really doesn't matter which. Inhale, reach up, big open. And this time as you exhale, you maybe brush the fingertips towards the floor 
or hands to knees, choice is yours. Other arm in top, inhale. So it's a lovely fluid, watery-like movement. Exhale, lovely guys. Oh, it's lovely, you all look beautiful. Woo, really nice to open the chest. Let's do one more, because it just feels so nice, that one, doesn't it? Inhale. Lovely, and exhale. So we're gonna add on this next time. So inhale, take that jumper off, turn the toes forwards. And this time as you exhale, let's bring the hands all the way back to rest on the low back. Or you can interlace them as we did before. Heel of the hands apart, draw the knuckles down, or just squeeze the elbows together. And as you exhale, bend the knees if you need to. We're gonna hinge forwards, and again, option to lift the arms up and over as the head hangs. If you don't like that on the shoulders, hands might just slide down the backs of the legs, just to hold on around the thighs or your shins, somewhere where your head and your shoulders feel comfortable. Beautiful. And then slowly, slowly, hands just come down onto the low back if you have the arms raised. And then let's bring the hands underneath the face and just walk your hands forward slightly. Keep the weight back in the heels, but get that sense of elongating through the chest and the back body there. And now really sink the weight back into your heels there. Again, feel that steadiness and ease. Now you might be on your fingertips. If you can, maybe think about butterflying your wrists. So just bring the heel of the hands together and the fingertips are pointing in opposite directions and push into those hands, feel the chest open. Look towards that right hand and lead with the fingertips as you inhale, sweep that right arm up. And as you exhale, either bring the wrist to touch or fingertips to floor. Other side, so keep pushing into that supporting hand as you inhale, left arm lifts. Exhale, brush the wrist together or fingertips to floor. Last time with that right arm, big sweep up as you inhale. The hand can stay there as you exhale, bring that hand to your low back. Or some of you might be able to catch hold of the top of your left thigh, depends how open the chest is. Keep pushing into that supporting hand. Roll the chest up. Your hips are kind of going to swing a little bit there. So don't worry too much about keeping the hip press facing forwards. Beautiful. Then release that right arm up as you inhale. Exhaling all the way back down. Last time with that left arm. So you can reach up and stay there. Or just rest the back of the hand or the palm on your low back. Or you can find that little tuck. Winding the top of your right thigh. We're going to roll that chest open. One side might feel a little harder than the other. And releasing that arm as you inhale. Exhale, bringing the hands down, lovely. Now if you're okay in that forward fold, you might want to walk your hands back now towards your feet. And you can keep the fingertips facing forwards, but try pushing into your hands and you feel perhaps that your bottom lifts a little bit. Or those of you more um, open in the backs of the legs might turn the hands away from you and walk your hands back between your legs so your fingertips are pointing towards the wall behind you. If you don't like having your head lower than your heart, just bring your hands above your knees, lift your chest and allow blood pressure to begin just to come back to normal there. So we're not going to hold for too long there. If you're in that forward fold, allow the crown of the head to drop down. If you're in forward fold, so to be very grounding. Beautiful. And then slowly, slowly, if you had your fingertips pointing away from you, let's just walk your hands forward then. So once more, your hands are just underneath your face. Let's all come up onto the fingertips and just lift the chest a little bit. Before we come over whichever leg you want. So just turning over your right leg or your left leg, it really doesn't matter. Turning all 10 toes into the same direction. Let's step back into a downward dog. And from your downward dog, keep your knees wide as you drop down onto the mat. And then big toes point towards one another, coming into that hair pose, that wide knee to child pose. Hips sink back towards that little seat you've made with your feet. And you might want to elongate through the arms. But a really nice, softer variation is to take the elbows nice and wide. One hand might rest on the other. You can have the hands forwards of your forehead. So as you just allow your body to melt forward with the elbows wide, it really separates that space between the shoulder blades. And I really like this one as someone who holds and carries a lot of tension in the upper body. This one for me, I can really let go. 
whereas with my arms extended in front of me, I sometimes feel the sense of squeezing shoulders up around my ears. So let's come back to that easy breath, steadiness means. Breathing into the back and the sides of the body now. Allowing everything to settle. And then when you're ready, just lifting the chest up, walking your hands back towards your knees. So you can push into your hands and point both knees forwards. Drop the bottom to one side and give the legs a little shake. Beautiful, lovely, lovely. So we're going to bring the soles of the feet together. And how close the heels are to the bottom really does depend on how open your hips are. So you might have your hands just resting on your knees. You might be able to bring your hands down towards your shins, your ankles, and bring the heels in a little bit closer. So if you can, just see if you can bring your elbows towards your inner knees. And have a little rock there. I've been doing this the last couple of classes. So a little rock from side to side. Yeah, so you can do this just with the hands on the knees there. So the aim isn't to touch the floor with your knees. It's just to bring a sense of space just into the hips. Just a little bit of movement there. Lovely. And then coming to stillness, finding again a position where you can allow the knees to soften. So if that means sliding heels further away, so be it. And then lift up nice and tall through the spine. And then leading with your chest and your chin, allow the body to yield forwards. And then tuck the chin in towards your chest and a little rounding of the back as you ripple back into the upright position. So it's a little watery flow there. So I like to inhale as I lean forwards. And as I exhale, a little drawing back and navel to spine, rolling the body upright and lifting the chin. So it's a little kind of flow there. Leaning forward, it's beautiful. And then a little tuck of the chin, so you're stretching out through the back of the neck, lovely. So you can either continue with that little movement, or this next time, lead with the chest and the chin, we'll take the body forwards. You can either just drop the chin down towards your chest, keep your hands resting on shins and ankles, relaxing the knees out to the side, or try taking the arms out in front of you onto fingertips. And that little bit of just pressing the fingertips slightly down into the mat. And I like just to drop my chin here so my back is rounded a little bit. So we're getting a lovely sense of elongation through the sides of the body as well as that relaxation through the hips. So that's quite a strong pose on the hips. So you can always take your heels much further away from your bottom. Lovely. And if you've got your arms reaching out in front of you, let's bring the hands to the shins or the ankles, chin to chest as you do that one last ripple all the way up. And extending the left leg out now, right heel comes in towards the boy. Beautiful. So back of the hand rests on top of that left leg. Keep that set of grounding through your right side as you reach up through the right arm and stretching over, sliding that hand towards your left foot, keeping the toes up towards the ceiling. I can keep the gaze down, if that's too much on the arm, just wrap the hand behind you and open up through the shoulder. Some of you again might be able to take the gaze up, that sense of peeling that armpit open. Lovely. And then slowly, slowly come all the way back up through center. Fingertips to the floor this time, take an inhale. And as you exhale and walk forwards, keep both sit bones grounded and the toes of that left foot stretching up towards the ceiling there. So it's very easy to want to kind of completely melt forwards, but then we lose that sense of connection through the, through the sit bones, particularly that left sit bone. And then walking the hands back towards you. Let's come back into that little side stretch. So back of the left hand resting on the leg. Or you might want to bring it to the inside of the leg. Just gently using the elbow against the inner knee. Right arm reaches up and over. And some of the more longer armed or flexible amongst you might even be able to take hold of your toes. I can't get there. But again, that sense of rolling that chest open towards the ceiling. Again, gaze might be down. 
back of the hand might be resting on shin or thigh, no worries. Lovely. Slowly release. Beautiful. And just bring the hands behind you so you can lean into the hands and swap legs over. Yeah, I can't do that, mermaid. My arms are too short. <laughs> So right hand just rests on the back of the leg to start with, on the top of the leg to start with. Shin or thigh, it really doesn't matter. Sit up nice and tall, reaching up, find the space through that left side on an inhale. Exhale all the way over. Again, hand might wrap behind you if that's too much with the arm, gaze might be down. Or if you're taking the gaze up, that sense of rolling, like a little tombola, rolling your chest up towards the ceiling. And keep the toes of that right foot up towards the ceiling. Lovely. Oh, that feels nice on the hip. Come all the way back up through centre. That little forward fold, so fingertips to floor. And it might only be a little forward fold before you finally want to lift that right sit bone. So again, yoga isn't about striving, it's about working with what we, what we have. Those Instagrammable photos of people posing on rocks could be argued it's not really real yoga. It's working where we are right here, right now in our rooms, with all our flaws and imperfections, glorious as they are, coming all the way back up through centre. So if you just need to keep the back of the hand resting on your, on your leg as we come back to that side stretch, you might tuck your elbow in towards your inner knee. You might even hook the big toe with your first two fingers. Wherever we are, as you find that side stretch, it's about keeping that integrity through your spine. And some of you might be able to reach the left fingertips and grab your toe. Yeah, so you can pick up. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna get there. All the way up, lovely. And just bring the hands back behind you so you can stretch out through the legs and give them a little bit of a shake. And then bringing your heels in towards your bottom. Let's ease our way down onto your backs. Heels quite close towards your bottom. And let's snuggle the elbows in towards your rib cage and your fingertips pointing up towards the ceiling. So the arms are bent, palms facing inward like a little robot. So just gently push your elbows and upper arms down into the floor without lifting the hips and just notice how that really arches through the back there. You can feel your chest puff up, space between your back and the floor. And then as you relax that pressure, you feel that sinking down back settling. So as you inhale, push down with elbows and upper arms, that little puffing of the chest up. And then exhale, release. So you can stay with that, just working the upper back. Or this time as you inhale, push down with elbows and upper arms. And as you puff the chest, so we lift the hips, coming into that little bridge. And then as you exhale, we feel that release, that letting go beneath the arms, releasing the hips. So we'll do that twice more. So drive the elbows and the upper arms down, that opposing energy of the hips lifting. And then all the way back down, pushing into the big toes so we keep the knees tracking forward. So as you push the hips up this time, we can stay there. Or hopefully maybe you've got a little bit of height now, so you might be able to release the hands to the floor. You keep the fingertips pushing down. Or tuck one elbow and one shoulder blade and then the other closer towards one another. So you can interlace the hands underneath you again, heel of the hands are apart. So I'm pushing down through the little finger edge of my hand and that sense of pushing up through the hips. Again, those opposing energies balancing, but we find that steadiness and ease. If it's not comfortable, we lower down. Squeeze the button. And then releasing the hands, I'm going to use my fingertips to the floor like stabilizers, lifting my heels. And then as I ripple down, I can really get that sense of release. If you don't like lifting your heels, then just keep your feet flat. And then as you feel the hips drop down, just allow the heels to land and pause there for a moment. Just allow everything to settle. And then we'll give the knees a little squeeze. We've not done that today, have we? Oh, give the knees a squeeze rock perhaps side to side. Lovely. So we're going to come into one last twist. So you can keep your knees to your chest as you bring the arms out shoulder height, palms up or down. Have a little play, sometimes turning the palms down. Even though it turns your shoulders inward, it can help you feel more grounded. If the back's been a bit tight today, remembering that self-compassion, that self-awareness, we bring the feet down to the 
So wherever we are, let's tip the knees to the right. Remembering that the closer your knees are towards your chest, the higher up the spine will feel that twist. So if you get there and it's a little bit too much, you can slide, slide, slide the feet further away from you, taking the knees away from that right arm. You can always pick up your head and turn over that left arm if that feels comfortable, looking towards that back hand. Lovely. Just allow a couple of breaths there. So wherever you kind of take from that, either joints stacked or the knees and the ankles sliding apart there wherever it feels comfortable. And find that ease of breath. Oh, just allow the body to just surrender to gravity, knees dropping down, upper back, yielding into the floor beneath you. And if like me, you've got your head turned, let's bring the gaze back through centre. And whatever the legs are doing, use an inhale to bring them back to centre. And then exhale, tip them the other way. So you might have your feet to the floor, you might take your feet wide. That feels quite nice if you kind of notice any tightness in your hips, that gets more into your hips. Or again, your knees and ankles might be stacked and you might have scooped your knees up towards your chest a little bit. You might pick up your head and just look over that back arm if that feels comfortable. And again, if you've turned your head, bring your head back to centre and then use an inhale to bring the knees back to your chest. If you have your feet on the floor, just bring your knees in one last time and have a little rock side to side or circling of your knees. Yeah, just a little massage and release through the tops of the buttocks and the back. And if you need to do anything else, if you need a full body stretch, if you need to do more twisting, do whatever you need to do. And then we'll just pause at the end of a practice for a few moments of relaxation in Shavasana. Legs either fully outstretched in that more traditional pose. The heels resting in, the toes just flopped out to the side, so the back of the hands resting on the floor. A little bit of space underneath the armpits. Or again, that compassionate curiosity, if your back doesn't like that, then re-bend your knees. And heels maybe close to your bottom, wider apart so your inner knees can knock together. That self respect for whatever's going on today. As you close the eyes, making whatever final adjustments you need to be fully comfortable. Again, it's coming back to what. Yoga really is the ability to be with whatever is arising and to leave nothing out without labeling, narrating, or judging. You're not trying to get anywhere or escape anything. We are dropping in rather than checking out we use yoga as a microscope to examine the way we engage in our moment-to-moment -moment experiences and the world around us. So we drop in now, in this moment of Shavasana, a really important posture, some would argue the most important posture. So again, just use that sense of compassionate curiosity attention and openness to whatever we feel at the end of the practice. And sometimes that can feel challenging or uncomfortable. Noticing, but not overanalyzing. So coming back to your breath.
sometimes when we're in Shavasana again, the mind just won't rest. But remembering that yoga is not a magic wand, it's not an instant fix. But it's that consistency, that practice, tiny changes. It's not going to alter your life as such, but it can alter perhaps your attitude. Attitude to life, the tools that we use to cope with difficult situations, the approach we take to those daily activities we're engaged with. And that perhaps in itself might be life changing, the practice of yoga. So as you begin to bring your awareness back to your breath, deepening and lengthening your breath, keeping that sense of attention and openness. As you wiggle fingers, toes, maybe just gently drop the chin from shoulder to shoulder, stretching out through the neck. And then you might want to just come into that lovely full open, full body stretch, opening up to space behind you, space above you. Ah, oh, lovely. Feels nice. Before you all just scoot the knees in towards your chest one last time. And then again, whether there's space to the left or the right of you, have a little roll onto that side. Before you come and join me in that comfortable, grounded position for seated, finding ease and steadiness, if that means extending your legs. There's no golden rule in yoga that says you must sit cross legged. And the hands again, wherever it feels comfortable, back of the hands, palms down, or just one resting on top of the other in your lap. Again, have a little play. Sometimes it feels different at the end of a practice. So we'll just drop the chin down to the chest, close the eyes just for a moment there. And I'll leave you with these words, funnily enough, by Ernest Hemingway, no great yogi himself, I hear, but he kind of summed it up. Try to learn to breathe deeply really to taste food when you eat and when you sleep, really sleep. Try as much as possible to be wholly alive with all your might. And when you laugh, laugh like hell. And when you get angry, get good and angry. Try to be alive. So we'll bring the hands to that final gesture, hands to heart, and Jali Mudra, lifting breastbone to meet thumbs. Thanking each other for sharing this Sunday morning with one another. Day of yoga. Namaste. Thank you, thank you. Oh, let me unmute everybody. There we go.